Good morning, Pleasant Valley. At this time, let us stand so that we can begin our worship service. We're glad to see you all with us on this morning. And now we ask that you prepare your hearts and minds for worship. We've been opening our services like this for quite some time, where we take a moment to gather our thoughts and to focus on who it is we're here for. And I think sometimes we can become complacent Sometimes we find it difficult to get into that mindset of worship. And a lot of times that can be because of our misperceptions of ourselves. I think we need to come before his presence humble. ourselves for who we are, then we can really see who God is. We understand how worthy he is. When we take into account what he has done for us, this season we are celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. understand why we needed a Savior. So at this time, reflect for a moment. Humble yourself before God. Thank Him for what He has done for us. you to think about that beautiful child that was born to save you, you, and you this morning. The Bible says in Isaiah 9 and 6, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, we come to give God praise. Amen. We come to praise the light of the world, the newborn king. How many come to just give him worship? Come on, how many come with a heart just to worship him, to give him glory? to give him honor no matter what we're going through, no matter what's on our minds. We know he's our God, worthy of our worship. Amen. And it's a simple song that just says, here I am to worship. Come on, help us lift that up. It says, light of the world, come on. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see the beauty that came this far adore you, hope of a life spent with Sing it here. I am the worship. says I'll never know lift that up come on I'll never know come on say how much it costs cost. come on say to see my to sins, see my sins. Come, on, come on above that cross come on lift your voice and say I'll never know much to see my sins come on lift your voice all over the building come on say
submission to God, close our eyes, and think on Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come this morning, first of all, giving all thanks and all glory and honor to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for watching over us all night last night as we slept. We thank you for the rain that passed our way, Heavenly Father, for our grounds needed. Heavenly Father, you know what we need, Heavenly Father, so we say thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for dying for our sins upon a cross, Heavenly Father. We thank you for rising up for us, Heavenly Father, that we may one day have the privilege of living out eternal life with you, Lord Jesus. We say thank you this morning. We ask that you forgive us for our sins, Heavenly Father, sins that we commit every day, Heavenly Father. We ask that you forgive us for sins that we don't even realize that we've done, Heavenly Father. We ask that you forgive us, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask a special blessing upon this day, Lord Jesus. We ask that you let something be said in your word through the preacher today, Heavenly Father, that will give us more strength, more endurance to run this race, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask that if someone may be in our midst today that is not sure about salvation, Heavenly Father, that you give them that assurance today, Lord Jesus. In this time, in this season, Heavenly Father, give them that assurance, Lord Jesus. And help us to realize, Heavenly Father, as we go through this season, Heavenly Father, that we give to others, we forgive others, that we pray for others, Heavenly Father, and we lift up others, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you. Bless your holy name. We ask that you look down on the wars that surround this country, this world, Lord Jesus. We ask that you look down on the politicians. Give them strength. Give them wisdom, most of all, Lord Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we know that your word says wisdom only comes from you, Lord Jesus. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you, Heavenly Father, give them the common sense to just ask for wisdom, Lord Jesus, how to run the world that you have us in, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless each and one that's here under the sound of my voice. Give them strength. Give them endurance, Heavenly Father. All these blessings we ask in your darling Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift it up one more time as we come to give God glory. Come all over the building. Come on, here I am to worship. Come on. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together. You're all together. Worthy. All together worthy. All together worthy. All together all wonderful. Together. God of praise. We've got a hand of praise. Come on, how many know there's nobody like our God? How many believe we serve an amazing God? Come on. Yeah. Come on. You give me that joy. You give me that joy. Come on, you give me that mercy. You give me that mercy I never deserve. Come on, you give me that love, nothing you give better. Me that love, Put your hands together. Come better. on. You give me that sweet peace. You give me that sweet peace I never bore. There's nobody like God. There's nobody like God, like God. I'm talking about my God, my God. Talking about. I'm talking about my God, my God. You give me that joy. You give me that joy like a river. Come on, you give me that mercy I never deserve. Come on, you give me that mercy I never deserve. Come 
Come on, you give me that love, nothing better. Give me that love, nothing better. Sweet peace. Give me that sweet peace like never before. Nobody like that. There's nobody like God, like God. I'm talking about my God, my God. There's nobody like God, like God. I'm talking about my time for the Lord. Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated all over the sanctuary. We thank God for all of you who are present on today. And for those of you who are watching online, we thank God for you and we pray that you get involved in the worship experience wherever you may be. We thank God for this day. Amen. Amen. How many of you love the Lord here on today? Amen. God bless you on today. We thank God for our praise and worship team and our female chorus. Amen. 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 Why don't y'all clap your hands as they come down and join you in the sanctuary on today. We thank God for you. Amen. We want to remember all of our members who are sick and those who are taking care of the sick as well. Uh, it's a tough job to take care of uh, sick family members and it's uh, difficult. And uh, we have a, a couple names on our prayer list that we want you to look at and consider as you go through the week and pray. One of my old drill team members, Yashika Van Norman, is on that list. That's Sister Mamie McDonald's daughter. We want to pray for her. Amen. Uh, as God regulate her mind, she had a stroke. And we want to pray that God bring her back 100%. Amen. Amen. But pray for Sister McDonald as well because it's hard on her, as you can imagine. Uh, so we want to lift her up in prayer during the week. It's been tough on her. She and I have been talking on the phone, and uh, it's been hard for her. So we want you to remember her during the week. Uh, if you don't mind, pick up the phone and call and encourage her. Amen? That would be nice for her to hear from you, especially those of you who know what she's going through 
you can give her a call and lift her up. Amen. All right. We want to remember all of those names on the list. And don't forget about these folk as you pray during the week. Also, during the Christmas uh, holiday, it would be nice for you to remember them during this time. Uh, I got a call from Sister Carolyn Martin early this morning. And uh, she had a, a bad accident and she broke her elbow. Amen. So we want you to pray for her uh, as uh, I minister to her as she go through that trial of life. And so remember the members, uh, my brothers and sisters, as they struggle uh, through this life, but let them know that it'll be all right after a while. Amen? All right, so uh, we want to lift them up in prayer uh, as we move forward. Uh, today we will be focusing on the office of pastor today, uh, and a program has been designed for that purpose, and we want you to be attentive to the program and participate in the program. All right, so we're going to skip the fellowship and move directly to uh, the program for the sake of time. Amen. All right, God bless you. sorry I'm Deacon Conrad Smith III and it is a honor and pleasure to serve as your master of service for this year's pastor's 12th anniversary program Sunday December 10th 2023 so first on program we're gonna have a welcome address by Deacon Kenneth Roach no? okay. then we're going to have as a grandfather uh, presented by Sister Neil, Nia, sorry, Nia Samuels and Brother Brandon Samuels Jr. on behalf of Allen Jr., Bailey, Journey, Austin, Demi, Craig Jr., Soleil, Neil, Reginald III, and Ezra. And then we'll have testimonial by Deaconess Etta Marie Jones. Please come in that order. Thank you. Good morning, Pleasant Valley. I'd like to welcome everybody out this morning to help us celebrate our pastor's 12th year anniversary. And we'd like for y'all to just pray and, and bless him, Lord, to keep continuing to lead us as our spiritual leader. I've been knowing this man for a long time, and we have more than just a, a pastor-brother relationship. We have, he's just like my brother to me. So just continue to pray for him and, and pray that he continue to lead us, amen? Giving is a slang phrase used to describe when someone or something is embodying a particular vibe, style, or mood. Some of you may have heard of this, but for those who haven't, here is a church example. If you are in a situation and someone is leading a group, is leading a large group well, let's say like a tour guy leading a big group through a city, you would say, ooh, it's giving Moses. Another example would be when kids laugh at their parents' jokes extra hard in December. You would say, it's giving, not wanting to jeopardize your Christmas gifts. I hope that helps you understand it's giving. So one day, me and a few of my cousins were with my papa, and he was taking us to see a house he was going to move into. And before we went into the house, my papa had a talk with us, and he said, don't drop anything, don't look at anything, don't mess up anything. We're trying to keep the house as clean as possible. So as we're looking through the house, my papa is t showing us everything about it and just trying to get us so interested in it. And he turns around and there's a mask on the floor and he gets so mad and he's like, who dropped the mask on the floor? <laughs> and me and my cousins, 
looked around and my sister Bailey was like, oh, Papa, that's your mask. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he was like, oh, and we all started laughing about it. It was so hard. What you don't, what you don't know, Papa, is that any time someone quickly blames anything on someone else, that is actually their fault at our house, we say, it's giving Papa, and we laugh really hard. <laughs> <laughs> but there are other situations when someone could say, it's giving Papa, or it's giving Pastor. Situations when someone is being spiritually honest without compromise. Sacrificial. A situation when someone is giving wise counsel. Overly excited about Star Wars. <laughs> cracking original jokes. Someone who, someone who always wants to hug. Somebody who is baffled by uncleanliness. And last, it's giving papa or pastor when you are around someone who cares deeply for the people and work of the church. We love you and think you are the best. Happy anniversary, papa. morning. I was sitting there, I thought some of the other kids was coming up. I was waiting for them to come up first. <laughs> uh, I just have a few things to say about our pastor. I've been knowing him practically all his life. I saw him from ca crawling under the benches. He worked with the drill team. And we had a dynamic drill team. He just grew children from everywhere. He has that uh, drawing charisma, and he still has it today. That's what I love about him. He, he has not changed. I saw him from the floor to the pulpit. I admire his courage. I admire his background. You say that the apple don't fall far from the tree? That apple didn't fall far from the tree. He picked up just where his dad left off. He was taught from a child the do's and the don'ts of how you live how you treat people, and how you go about it. And if you have anything that you need to talk about that's troubling you, that's the go-to man right there. He can tell you, and he always start out with, we're going to pray about it. We're going to see what God says. He don't talk that junk. He wants you to be saved, and he show it in his walk, in his talk, and how he treat us. I love him with all my heart. He's just like a son to me. And April, you better be careful, because if you mistreat him, you got to answer to me. <laughs> That's my I can call him and talk to him, and the first thing I say, you got a minute to talk? Because sometimes I keep him a, a good while. <laughs> the things that I need to know, I ask him, I say, well, I don't know what to do. That's why I'm calling you. And he tells me just what I need to do. I'm an old lady, but that's my pastor. And when I need some advice, that's who I go to. And I ask him, what should I do? And he get it straight from the Bible. He don't. 
and he's not a man that want to be put up here. He want to be one of us. He don't want to be uh, recognized as some big man. He don't have no big eyes and little U's because that's not what God wants. I love him. He has been a special person. He's smart, book wise, and smart in the law. And if you need any advice on anything, go to your pastor. Respect your pastor. When you respect him, you respect his wife. Because she is part of him. They are one. And you should not have something that you trying to talk to him about and don't want him to know. That's not the way it goes. They are one. Because I call Sister April and talk to her about things. I'm an old lady. Y'all just have to be patient with me. I may say some things that may not sound the way you want to sign it, but I mean that for you. And if I can do anything to help any of you, please come to me and let me know. I love you, Pastor. And I want you to remain faithful. I well, would like to thank Brother James McDonald for the um, warm words of welcome. Appreciate it. And also like to thank um, um, Nia and Brandon for sharing their stories about their their, their beloved grandfather, and also a little personal note for myself. Um, probably my uncle is the reason that I like Star Wars myself. I mean, just I've never met a Star Wars fan big as he is. I mean, I'm surprised he's never even like came to church dressed in a Star Wars character. You know, it'd have been, it'd have been cool to get a sermon from the Jedi Master. I'm just saying, all right. Also, Sister, Mad uh, Sister Jones, um, for your testimonial, thank you so much. And yes, I do agree with you, the pastor does have riz. All right, for those of y'all who don't know, that's charisma. All right, so next on program, we're gonna have As a Brother by Sister, by Minister, sorry, Belinda Smith and Deacon Andre Vonado Sr. Also, Responsibilities to the Pastor by Minister Alan Powell III and As a Father by Minister Brittany Smith, Sister Nicole Samuels, Minister Reginald Vonado Jr., and Deaconess Jennifer Elsey. Please come in that order. Thank you. Good morning. I'm getting up there a little bit. Okay. Okay, life is simply more colorful when you have siblings to share it with. You may get on each other's nerves at times, but at the end of the day, you do have each other's back. You have someone to celebrate life's triumphs and someone that supports you in life's challenges. We, Pete and Asri Varnado's kids, have had nothing short of an amazing journey as siblings thus far. Today, Belinda and I come together to celebrate our middle brother, Reginald's 12th year at pastor's anniversary. There are so many things that we can share about Reginald that we, that we struggle to figure out what to share we decided to share some of the many lessons that we have learned from Reginald's advice and his life experiences. Hopefully, these little pearls of wisdom can help someone here today. Reginald has taught me the power of persistence. He holds the world's record for the longest one-word tele telephone conversation to this date. You remember, Ray? Tammy, Tammy, Tammy. Tammy, Tammy. 
From an early age, Rachel has always been my best friend. Until I told on him. Then I became his target. <laughs> Reginald taught me that we always had to stick together. He was my partner in crime until we got caught. <laughs> then it was every man a woman for themselves. He took pride in teaching me everything he knew, unless it was something mom and dad would not like. Then I learned it from somewhere else. He was very protective of me, although I am the firstborn, he kept all of my deepest secrets that I shared with him for a price. That reminds me that I am late with this month's payment. <laughs> Reginald taught me the importance of sharing. He was always willing to share anything he had with me, except for the chocolate chip cookies and the grapes. That's where he drew the line. There is one life lesson that Reginald shared and continues to share with us that we both are so thankful for. That is the importance of a relationship with Christ. Brother, we are so proud of you and your accomplishments as pastor of our church. We, will, we are always here to support and look forward to many more years of continuing dad's legacy. Congratulations, and we both we love you. Good morning, Pleasant Valley. It's a great day uh, here being able to come in and celebrate together our pastor's anniversary and, and worship the Lord together. I've been tasked with talking about the responsibilities of a church to a pastor and I just want to talk briefly about meeting a pastor's needs. Um, one of the big ideas and, and concepts the Bible talks about is that how we as brothers and sisters in Christ have a responsibility to each other in total. Uh, we should always be looking out for our brothers, taking care of our brothers and sisters, making sure that first and foremost we take care of each other as an example to the world of how all humans should take care of all humans. But the Bible makes a point that pastors and those who are preachers and teachers of the word because of the serious responsibility they have should be treated with a little extra special care. And one of the ways a church can meet a pastor's needs is by making sure we treat the pastor's work with appropriate care and appreciation. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18, it says, the elders who direct the affairs of the church are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. There, the Church is entire is saying that it, the Bible is saying that the church should remember that as a pastor is doing the work of a pastor, we gotta make sure we don't take advantage of him. That we make sure we treat him and give him what he needs to provide for himself and for his family. When the Bible says, "Do not trade a an ox as it moves out the grain," it means that as you work, there are certain things you are entitled to based on the prop, the production that you create at your job. If a pastor is doing his job and helping to grow and, and allow a church to be able to be financially viable, he deserves the payment that comes along with that. It's not a pastor being money hungry or seeking something he doesn't deserve. It's just the thing that is due him for the good work he has done. Another concept the Bible talks about a lot is that we as Christians have to make sure we reject a sense of entitlement. They sometimes can lead to overwork or look, lead us to in, inconsiderate behavior. The pastor's job, as Sister Jones so eloquently explained, is to be there to be a support for us, to, to be there when we need help and, and need advice. When my mother was going through her, her cancer and passed away, I called the pastor a lot, and it wasn't always during business hours, nine to five, right? And that's part of his job, to be there. But be reasonable. 
If there's something you can handle at a time that's not three in the morning, handle it at a time that's not three in the morning. If he is out doing something else, be patient and believe that if he forgot or he didn't say or do something the way you thought he should have done it, it wasn't because he was trying to make you feel bad or trying to ignore you. It just happens because he's a human and a man. We are all people, and none of us is entitled to be special compared to everybody else. The pastor has an entire church of believers he's responsible for caring for, and sometimes, as any of us who've ever served in a leadership role knows, sometimes things just fall through the cracks. Always extend grace. Always show mercy. The same things we ask God for all the time in our prayers. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 13, it says, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem or respect them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And finally, the last way a church can really meet a pastor's needs and meet his responsibilities to the pastor is to give willingly to the support for the necessary physical and emotional needs of a pastor. Luke chapter 10 verse 7 says, when he talked, when Jesus was talking to his disciples and he sent them out among the we're not worthy of respect. So just as we would like our pastor to show honor and loyalty to us, we as believers show honor and loyalty to him. Amen? Amen. 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 Good morning. First Timothy 3, 4 through 5 says, qualifications of a pastor. It says he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his family, how can he a God's church? Part of managing your family well is to lead with vision. As a leader of his family, my dad is a great visionary. It could be from remodeling a house to seeing your potential in life. Most importantly was his vision for his family to serve and love the Lord with all our hearts, soul, and mind. He kept us in inspired and excited with his, envision, his vision involving us in opportunities to serve the Lord, like the music ministry, back to school plays, drill team, musicals, extravaganzas, Congress, and the list goes on and on. I used to say back in the day, we were either at church or Blockbuster, so you'll find us at one of those places. <laughs> he wasn't just a speaker of his vision, he was a doer. He would act on it to bring his vision to life. He invested his time and money, though we didn't know where the money was coming from, but money, into his vision. I think about the time and money he put into his family, from family vacations that educated us, to building a music studio in the house to inspire us to play. He let nothing hinder him from bringing life to his vision for his family that we see before our eyes today. Raj didn't want me to play this video him because he has on what we call high water pants. So as we watch this video, I just want you guys to zoom in on those pants. 
Okay, it's just a short clip. <laughs> okay. Hush, Neil. chasing us around or just buying from our little store. <laughs> he played with us and it seems like he did that kind of stuff every day, looking back, laughing, talking, and bringing us places. Um, as we got older, the plane stopped, but he was still involved by coming to our recitals our parades and not missing one report card conference, just not one thing. He was so involved at home and was heavily involved in church and bringing kids from the school he worked at at the church. Um, that's why for him, there's no excuse about working for God while simultaneously being an active father. While he, um, sometimes he jumps on me about working in the church, you know, and I say, Dad, maybe God gave you like a special energy. And he's like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you have to give God all you can. This, that's the whole reason we're on earth. I don't want to hear it. While you're here, I want you to work for God. And I can't lie that that's what he did. He was so active at home and he would still do so much in the church. As we got older, he still wanted to guide us just as much as when we were little, and we wanted him to be involved less. And he would always say, people think it's hard raising kids. It's hard raising young adults. Y'all want me to be less involved, and y'all about to ruin your lives. But I'm glad he stuck it out. I'm glad he's still involved and giving us wise words when we want it and when we don't. So uh, the joke's on Nicole because that's actually the style now. <laughs> um, like I tell the boys, uh, I was just ahead of my time. Um, but I wanted to speak, um, we've all heard the saying, uh, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, or is it a meal, something like that? And, uh, but if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. Uh, and I had a father that was able somehow to feed us abundantly with fish and also teach us how to fish. Um, he was uh, an amazing teacher. Uh, to his family. Uh, from very little, he would sit us down at the table. We would all have our sheets of paper and our pens, and he would go through the budget for the week and have us write down everything. And I can tell you right now, um, I'm sure that, which one is it? Uh, I can assure you that we all know how to budget money. We've been doing it since children. Uh, but everything he did, um, he made sure we knew how to do it. Uh, there was nothing that he did, nothing in life that he did not make us a part of to make sure we understood 
how to do it. Uh, whether it be building a tool shed during a windstorm. Uh, and we all learned the lesson uh, after a cut finger that you do not build a tool shed during a windstorm. But uh, we, he, we were, I mean, we learned so many lessons from him. And I just kind of look now, um, like Brittany said, in he invested his money and sometimes we didn't know where the money came from. And just looking at my own life, I'm sure my dad probably didn't know where the money came from either. And I look at my life now and I'm like, I don't know how things happen, but I do know that the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. And he made sure to put God first and we, he passed that lesson down to us. And I also know that, Nicole said, as young adults, it's difficult. Um, you don't know it at the time, you know, and sometimes you just swear you're right. And one thing I just really hated to hear from my dad was, just do what, I'm, what I tell you, just, just do what I'm saying. And I said that I would never say that, and I haven't gotten to the point to say that with my kids yet, but uh, I have a ton of boys uh, that I work with and it, it boils up in me and I said I said I wasn't gonna say it but they pull it out of me and I'm like just do what I t I'm telling you to do and then you know I have to reflect and I want to apologize to my dad for that time because I'm sure it was difficult for him but he stuck with me and I, I go to him for lessons I, there's never a time where I'm not learning from my dad and he, pa he does that with the church as well so uh, I want to thank him for all the lessons that he has taught me and the lessons that I'm continuing to learn. Um, Psalms uh, 112 and 2 say, His seeds shall be mighty upon earth. The generations of the upright shall be blessed. Um, I was thinking about my dad's legacy, like the things he has passed on to us. And um, Nicole may remember that CJ started school this year and um, he was going over the letter T and the teacher's like a line down and then a cross and then here's Jesus, I mean CJ, like Jesus on a cross, like that's what he's yelling in class and singing Christian songs in front of all his friends and it makes me think of like my dad started that and passing it on to us even thinking of the younger ones going to the conferences with him and then that week Ezra setting up a mic and he <laughs> like preaching like he's seeing his grandfather doing all these other um, ministers do. So um, my father has taught and preached to not only just me and my husband to my siblings and their spouses and people beyond that, families beyond that. And he is passing down God's love through so many generations, like people that like, oh yeah, I knew your father. Oh yeah, I, I remember, I remember when he preached. Oh, even when my mother-in-law comes, I love your dad, I love the way he preached. And she goes on to Texas back home and saying things she learned here. So he is passing on God's love and it's starting from, from his father down to us and now on to our children and so many of us here, our children. And our job here as members under his leadership is to continue that pass that on through the generations, what he has taught us, teaching our children to study about God's word, teaching our children to go to school, like, like Nicole talked about the back to school play, all those things to spread what God has told him and to spread it all over. So I just wanted to say as, just not even as his children, but our job as a church to spread what we know our pastor has taught us for so long. And yeah. Well, I, I like to thank. Uh, where, where did I leave off at? Here we go. I like to thank um, Sister Smith and Brother um, Bonado for their experiences growing up with the pastor as their um, as their sibling. And just hearing some of the stuff that my mom used to say about my uncle is, uh, you know, these, these, those are some funny stories. I, I've heard that Tammy story 
millions of times. It's, it's very funny every time I hear it. Uh, the responsibilities of a pastor to uh, of a church to the pastor. Thank you, Brother Powell, for those wonderful words and of, of encouragement to the church and how to serve as uh, to serve our pastor. And also, um, the, my cousins um, for their experiences growing up under you know under their father. And judging by how my cousins turned out, uh, Uncle Reg, you did a wonderful job raising your children, and they turned out very extremely well. God-fearing children, and nobody can't take that away from you, sir. All right, so we're going to move through all the way to the end. So next on program, we're going to have another testimonial by Sister Carletta Graves, the pastoral history by Sister Donya Vonado, the sermon by our pastor, um, Reginald Vonado Sr., invitation to discipleship as a husband by First Lady Minister April Vonado, presentation from the church, pastoral remarks, and a benediction. Please come in that order, and thank you. When he can find her, Vonnegut, ask him to speak on what I thought he said when I passed her in his Well, of course, I agree. As I thought about what I was saying, I decided to speak of how I see him in action. I read the passage in 1 Timothy, 3rd chapter, 1 through 7, in the easy read version. As I read the qualifications of an elder who definitely fulfilled these qualities, and in verse 1, the word speaks of set on good works. The elder must know what good works that needs to be fulfilled according to the word. And verse 2 speaks about being a good man. No one can rightly criticize him. Also, he must be faithful to his wife. If not, He must be self-controlled and wise. He must be respected. I have also seen how he serves his members with kindness. A very good quality he possesses and an excellent teacher. We as members are blessed that our pastor is well educated in higher learning. Even though he don't want to go back to teach our children. <laughs> but, but I understand, Pastor. But ain't nobody wanted to get pay bail money. <laughs> we need it for the church. <laughs> and verse 3 speaks about not being a fighter. I remember he told a story about, I think, something, a noise in the house when they were young or something. And, and, and it, and all of them ran, got ran behind him. He said, well, <laughs> he said oh, I'm not going to fight him with day. We just better just pray. <laughs> but possess a gentle spirit and peaceful. Also must not be a lover of money. So what's the purpose, our pastor? Love of the money. We don't keep it in and out, in and out. Because <laughs> it has to serve its purpose. 
we do need money, but we have it serves his purpose. Verse 4 speaks of being a good, a good leader of his own family. That has been demonstrated with his grudges. He treats with management the money of the church. He knows where he needs to make cuts, where they need to be, and he has done excellent with that. And that would seem to have been taught from his father. Because I had the privilege of being under his father as well. And he was very stern about that. He told us, he said that we don't need to have that. I've heard it, said it, and he learned from that. Verse 6 states that he must not be a new believer. How can you be a new believer to be a leader? You have to be rooted in the word to know and not fall. Verse 7 states an elder must also have the respect of people who are not part of his church. He exhibited that because I know when he tells us all to get on that bus and go to different churches, how they respect him. They speak well of him. So they know he is God's child. And he listens and he needs it to be done in the community as well. Then he will not be criticized by others and be caught in the devil's trap. You didn't even have not to have the big head. Because when you get the big head, you get in trouble. Yeah. You forget who you are. The pastor has a special place in his heart for our youth. I know you can't help not miss no that. He loves the children in the church. He takes time with the children. And he knows that what the word says. Turn up a child. And they will show them where they must go. And he will be used. And they will. But you have to take time with them. Through his leadership, I have seen our pastors grow in Christian learning of all others. I've seen people who've been working, and they come up in the sermon. They want a sermon on the good, sound doctrine. Good, sound doctrine. I appreciate as a pastor, he lets the members know that he is human. He is exposed to the same troubles of this world like all of us. I know he probably has a lot of sleepless nights concerned about the members. He teaches us that we must read and study our Bible and apply the word to our lives. He encourages us to be a church family and support one another through prayer. When one member hurts, we should do whatever we can to help them throughout it. Through it. He encourages us to witness to the law. We must enter to learn in this house and depart to witness and serve. As a member of Pleasant Valley for a number of years now, I can truly say I have grown under his leadership and teaching. I have gotten stronger in the law. Thank you. Good morning. Pastoral history. Pastor, Reg pastor Varnado became senior pastor of Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church of New Orleans, Louisiana in December 2011. As pastor, he has led the church in major strides of growth in evangelizing to the community. Prior to serving as senior pastor, he served as the youth pastor Minister of Music and Drill Team Youth Director for the past 41 years. 
Pastor Vonado served as a teacher with 14 years teaching social studies and music courses at the middle and high school levels. In this capacity, he has led many youth people to Christ. He also served as a professor at Union Baptist College and Theological Seminary, where he taught course in Old and New Testament and church administration. Pastor Vonado earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Social Studies Education from Southern University at New Orleans in 2000. He earned a Master of Divinity degree from Union Baptist College and Theological Seminary in 2006. On May 16, 2018, Pastor Vonado received an honorary doctor degree from Union Baptist College and Theological Seminary. Pastor Vonado is the father of six children and grandfather of 12 grandchildren. He is married to First Lady April Vonado. For many years, Pastor Vonado has worked tireless in the community. He serves with various community agencies and leaders on improving the conditions of our people through the spreading of the word of God. He currently serves as the General Secretary of the Louisiana General Missionary Baptist Convention. Pastor Vonado is a, st a supporter of the school system and the effective teaching of children to grow and become an active and vital part of the community. Under his leadership, 15 brothers became deacons of the church. Pastor Vonado has continued the tradition of intensive teaching and learning God's word in our church with a progressive Bible class each week and a modernized Sunday school model. A church bus was purchased along with two vans to accommodate our members' needs and to extend the outreach ministries. Completing renovations include the video and music areas, baptismal pool area, and upgrading the church's technological advancements. In addition, weekly sermon notes were induced it instituted to encourage additional study of the Sunday message. In addition, he has made adjustments to the service in order to further encourage spiritual growth of the members. Pastor Vonado follows the motto as it is written in the scripture in Acts verse, chapter 2, verse 42, to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers praising God and having favor with all the people. We love you, Pastor Vonado. Happy anniversary. Amen. Let us say amen. Amen. We thank God for all of you and with the kind words that were said, and uh, you know I feel very uncomfortable during that time, and uh, so do some of you, and I understand that. Um, when I worked at Raleigh Foods Company years ago, nobody really wanted to say anything nice about their supervisor. It was more comfortable to say ugly things about them, to be honest. And uh, But I, I learned when I worked at Raleigh, my father taught me to always support your supervisor. He said, if you want to move up in the company, be a company man and support the supervisor. Never go against him, never speak ill toward him, and you'll move up. And I did that. And in Raleigh companies, I moved up several times, all the way to management, because I followed that advice. It's easy, my brothers and sisters, to speak ill against the leader of whoever. You, you know, we love talking about our parents in an ill way, right? We, we speak against our supervisors, our parents. Spouses speak against each other. We go to the barber shop and talk bad about our wives, right? Uh, but it's very uncomfortable to say nice things uh, about somebody. Uh, but God teaches us to do it. Honor those who deserve honor. And I'm not here to receive honor from any of you. Sister Jones know, knew me from a baby. She didn't tell you that when I was crawling under the pew, she whipped me for doing that. She didn't tell y'all that part. Uh, she didn't tell you. She left that part out conveniently. But 
Uh, but she trained me from my baby along with all the other members of the church. And she taught me in Sunday school. And I never forget the lessons and I, you know, that she taught me in that classroom. And then to hear her call me and ask me what she should do, that's very different for me. And I just stick with the word of God, as she says. And, uh, and I just believe Sister Jones already know what to do. She just tests me. Let me see if he'll say the right thing. Let me see if this boy learns something. But she called me, and she takes her time talking to me, and she encourages me all the time. And I thank God for her. And uh, Sister Graves, you touched my heart, and I thank you for it. And um, I know that you are a strong supporter of the pastor and of this church. Uh, and I thank God for you and what you do. And for all of you that support the ministry, we thank God for it. My father taught me that um, they hated Jesus because Jesus stood on the truth. And the scripture teaches that they're going to hate you as well. So I'm not bothered by it uh, when people act ugly toward me or whatever they do or misunderstand. Uh, on the drill team, I was trained by the children how to receive that. Uh, the children would cut up terribly do all kinds of things. Almost got us put out of a hotel one time. You know, and I, I didn't sleep, you know, everybody else was on vacation. I was at work. And uh, they, would, they would really teach me how to manage the church. And uh, my grandsons, every day, they teach me how to manage y'all. Because sometimes y'all act just like them like babies, like babies. And uh, if anybody ever kept babies, y'all know they don't get along at all. All day, trying to teach them to love one another is a task. And that's what happens around here. Uh, I fuss sometimes, but every babysitter fuss. If you're a real babysitter, you find yourself saying things Sometimes you say things you have to go back and apologize to the children for saying. And it's the same thing because you want people to love one another and not bicker and, and get into it with each other. Every school I taught at, my brothers and sisters, let me tell y'all something. God never let me teach at a good school. Never. Never. I never experienced that. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I always taught where the kids were troubled and they fought a lot. And when I say fight, I mean, uh, anybody know what the banner, what is ballerinas? That, that's what they call who the twirl of things? Uh, major rats, right? The major rats. Y'all know that thing they twirl? That thing is steel. I don't know what it's made of. And two girls were beating each other to death with those things. And I went in between them. And guess what I got? Y'all think they stepped back and said, oh, sorry, Mr. V. They say you shouldn't have been there. And they hit me like they was hitting each other. And, uh, you know, somebody said, Pastor, you might have to go back to the schools. Walmart better. <laughs> I can't handle it. I just can't. All right, so thank God for all of you, and uh, I, I appreciate all of you, and I spent many hours with many of you and many children in this city. I spent time with them that you don't even understand, and I introduced them to the Lord, and it's going to take some of them some time before they accept it, but I'm faithful to know that whatever God begins, he's going to complete it. It may take them a little while to get it, but they, they're going to come around. I see them pop in every now and then, and uh, they know what I'm all about. Okay, they know what I'm all about. And uh, at Clark, they call my classroom the church. And uh, they wouldn't curse in my classroom. They wouldn't allow it either. They, 
they tell them, you know you in the church, man, don't curse in here. And uh, that's how they felt. And they knew who, who I was. And I did the best I could to teach them about the Lord. Um, today's lesson, as we continue on through the book of James, is talking about the tongue. The tongue. Raise your hand if you got a tongue. It's talking about that, and we need to learn some things. A lot of problems happen in our church, in our homes, at our workplaces, because of our tongue. Um, and we're going to look at that and try to understand the will of God concerning the tongue, a dangerous part of the body. Let's stand for a minute. We're going to read um, I got it. Well, I have up there verses 1 and 14, but that's from last week Sunday. Uh, we're going to read verse 13. I have the right scripture down there, but it, the heading is wrong. 2 and 13, or 3 and 13, I'm sorry, 3 and 13. It, it reads, who is wise and understanding among you? Among you. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from what? Wisdom. Comes from what? Wisdom. Wisdom. All right, you may be seated. We talked about two kinds of trials or two types of trials. Today we're talking about two kinds of wisdom. There are two kinds of wisdom that you need to understand before you leave here today. Two kinds of wisdom. Two kinds of wisdom. Where is your wisdom coming from? Sometimes we can be wise in our own eyes and actually not realize that that's not wisdom but foolishness. But you may call it wisdom, but we'll see what the word of God says. So there's two kinds of wisdom, our kind and God's kind. Two kinds of wisdom, our kind of wisdom, what we call wise and what God calls wise. Y'all got that? Because the world, in the world, some people feel they're pretty wise. Uh, you, you ever heard people say uh, he's, uh, he has street smarts? Or, you know, and, and we call that wise. Uh, he, he knows how to handle himself in the street. Okay, But we're, we're going to see what God says. There's a quote uh, from an unknown author that says, Watch your tongue. It is in a wet place where it's easy to slip. Watch your tongue now. It's in a wet place where it's easy to slip. Has anyone ever said, I didn't mean to say that? Anybody in here? Now y'all talk to me now. Any of you said, I didn't mean to say that? Or, or we'll say, uh, I didn't mean to say it like that. You, you, you ever had to go back and say, let me say it another way. Right, and, and sometimes you end up making it even worse because the tongue, the tongue is a problem for us, for all of us. Even for, where's Rashika? She don't say nothing. Where's Rashika? Is she in there today? Rashika don't say nothing, but I bet that tongue slip every now and then. Y'all may not hear it, but all of us have a problem with the tongue. Write this down, the importance of the tongue. The importance of the tongue. Now, young people, you need to learn this too because uh, the, the elders say things like, you can let your mouth overload you. All right, uh, your mouth can get you into a world of trouble. All right, so you need to pay close attention and make sure that you understand that there are two kinds of wisdom. Our first note for today says all believers. That's everybody. 
especially teachers of God's word, must consider their speech before God and man. Now, uh, somebody said, Pastor always admit that he's human. Well, that is just a f I'm, I'm human. And uh, even when I was working with the drill team, uh, uh, it, it, it would get to me sometimes when the kids would have attitudes. I, I, I don't mind teaching you, and I have patience to wait until you get something. But I don't like when you come with an attitude. That, that just bothers me when you come and you purposely uh, not doing what you should do. You know, you, you messing up on purpose. You, you don't care about where we're trying to go. You know, and, and then Sister Linda, when these type of things happen, that go Reginald's tongue. Right? It's just flying off the handle out of anger. Because I, I, I just didn't like when you try to work against what we're trying to do. And the same thing happens in our families. You ever had a family member that's going against the grain? It's like, man, we, we came here to have dinner. Why you got to come here bringing all that? Right? I mean, just ruin your day. I mean, you cooked all day, put all this together, and here they come changing the mood. Just aggravating. Right? You tired already? And there go your tongue saying all kinds of stuff, right? Putting them in their place, right? Some of you said, I laid my religion down. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on now, I'm by myself here. And some of y'all so good, y'all got it packed. You know, y'all got this right all the time. But uh, I, I have to admit, uh, there were times that uh, I didn't say the right thing. Do I have a witness in here? No, nah, I ain't say the right thing all the time. Sometimes I had to go back and apologize. Anybody with me in here? Anybody go back and say, look, I'm sorry for this. All right. It, it happens. But especially teachers. Teachers. Let's, let's look at the scripture here. It says, not many of you should become teachers. Tell your neighbor, maybe you shouldn't be a teacher. And I said, look, I just had to tell them what I had to say. It was on my chest, and I just had to say it. Well, maybe, maybe teaching ain't your thing, especially in God's house, right? My fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Yeah, see, some of y'all don't understand that. There's a lot of pressure, especially on the pastor. And, and my, my father and I would talk about these things. He would walk up on people talking about him. He would hear him already saying things about him. He had the clear stroke. <coughs> <coughs> and that took a lot of strength. And, and, and I remember he and my mother would have conversations and, and all my mom would say, you should have told him something. See, that's your problem. You should have told him how you felt about that. Because my dad would be going home trying to explain to my mama, like, Re, I heard him doing this and that. You should have said something. But he said, I can't. I can't. Now, that's a position to be in if you think about it. Mamas and, and, and dad is supposed to your children were saying stuff and you couldn't say nothing. It's supposed to law forbid a parent for saying something. Some of y'all will be dead by now. Had a heart attack and died. Right? But a teacher of God's word has to be careful because he's going to be judged more strictly. Write this note down. The teacher of the Bible must be prepared to obey what he or she sees in the word. Now, we just can't read it to be educated. Every time we pick up the Bible and read it, the first place we got to check is ourselves. See, and, and you know, uh, I, I taught my daughter, Brittany, she said, Daddy, how would I know which song to sing for the church? I say, if it don't bring you to tears, don't sing it. If it doesn't convict you, why, why would you think it's going to do something for the people? 
it first needs to start with you. Every teacher in here, I, I hope you don't read the Bible and say, oh, I can't wait to go tell them. Ooh, I'm going to set them straight when they hear this. If it don't set you straight first, do I have a witness in here? Don't try to go to God's house showing what you know. It should convict you first. For those of you who don't read the Bible, let me admonish you right now. Pick it up. Read it. Let it do what it's designed to do. Oh, the, the word of God will not return unto him void. It's going to do what it is designed to do, just as the rain does. I heard my sister praying. She said, thank you for the rain because the ground needs it. Do I have a witness in here? So just as the ground needs rain, we need the word of God. The word of God can set you straight and get your heart right. Read this with me. Follow my example, the apostle Paul says, as I follow the example of Christ. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. So it starts up here. It starts right here with, with me and these guys you see right here. If we don't do what the word says, how can we expect you? So we have to set the example. We, we are the ones that should be the first to apologize. I, I remember times my father would preach and he would be so depressed about what he had to preach to the people. God said, tell him what I said. And my father would, after he preached, he would apologize to the church for preaching what God told him to preach. Do y'all hear me? Because it hurts that bad. So if the teacher dilutes or explains away the clear meaning of the scripture, he hinders your growth. We can't stand here and tell lies to you. We can't pretend or make this up. We have to read it and tell you what thus says the Lord. Whether you like it or not. That, that, that's none of our business. So, you know, I've learned to say that's between you and God. And, you know, hey, I, I'm just going to say what it says. You can read it along with me. I love the screen where we can put it up where you can see that that's what the word says. Now, you deal with it while I'm dealing with it for myself. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, yeah, I have to obey this first. I have to get this right first. Uh, look at uh, the second verse. It says, we all stumble. Tell your neighbor, you stumble? We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. They're mature, able to keep their whole body in check. Listen to me. It starts with the tongue. If you can't control the tongue, you're having problems in other areas of your life as well. So, you, you know, you can't just go around saying anything and then talking about, uh, I'm good. Nah, I doubt it. Your mouth tells on you. Have you ever witnessed somebody who told on themselves? You ever heard somebody... You, you, they just talk too much, tell too much, tell all of their business. Do I have a witness in it? My father used to say, Reginald, people wouldn't know how ignorant you were if you kept your mouth closed. <laughs> See, you, you told on yourself. You let people know you don't know nothing. If you can control the tongue, you will have no trouble controlling the rest of the body. What you text is coming from the tongue. I didn't say it, I texted. It's coming from the tongue. What you tweet, watch what you're tweeting, children. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to go against you when, when you have to meet the Lord and say. Uh, you, you know, I... Uh, I tell people, watch what you put on computers because you can't really never really erase that stuff. Well, that's a good concept for us to learn. How many of you know everything you say is recorded in heaven? See, we just learned how to do that, but God's been recording. 
He had that technology a long time ago. When Moses was around, uh, Moses uh, hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Do I have a witness in here? That was recorded. And God said, you'll never see the promised land. So watch what you're saying with your fingers. With your tweeting, with your, well, what else they do? Face, Facebook, and that's their lot? Snapchat, what? Oh, oh, oh. TikTok and uh, keep on TikTok and watch what you're saying about other people because you can't erase it. You can't erase it. God got it written. Do I, do I have a witness in here? Uh, and, and let me tell you, be especially careful what you say about your pastor. Be listen. Even if you think he's wrong. Let God take care of it. Let God take care of it. Don't you go around trying to spread some mess among the church and all that kind of stuff because you're talking about, see, you're talking about something I don't own. You know, you going around spreading discord in the church because of something I said? You're talking about God. And when you mess with God's anointed, you're messing with him. That's the same way trying to mess over your mama. Those of you who curse mama out, heaven ain't with you. Well, I have a witness in here. Heaven ain't with you. And, and I don't care if you 18. You could be 28, 38, 48, 58, 68, 78, 88, 98. Even his mama is dead, you better watch what you say with your mouth about your parents because that don't sit good with God. That woman carried you for nine months. That woman fed you when you was an infant, didn't know who you were. She the one taught you and raised you and fed you and, and, and provided shelter for you. You don't have that right. To say one thing about that lady. Be careful what you say with your mouth. Illustrations of the tongue. Illustrations. James is an excellent writer. He's the brother of Jesus. Uh, and he gives us some illustrations so to make sure that we understand that the tongue can cause you some problems. And he wants you to know that it must be controlled. I know you say, I can't help it. That's true. But you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Look, when you pray, first thing when you get up in the morning, say, Father, help me with my tongue. On this day, Father, help me not to say anything that will be offensive to you or anyone else. So he compared it first to a bridle. Bridles are the harnesses which go over the horse's heads and hold the bits in the horse's mouth. Connected to the bits are the reins. Through the bit itself is a very small piece of steel. Yet if a person can control that bit, he can control the behavior of the horse. So the tongue can direct the life either for good or for evil. Your tongue can cause blessings to come to you. And we've talked about this before. You've got to control it or let God control the reins of what you say, direct your tongue. Because you can be directed to good with God. But if you let Satan control the reins, you can be directed toward evil and end up in a whole lot of trouble. Look at the verse. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Now, they can control a big old horse with a small bit. 
Don't tell me what God can do with your tongue. Let's look at another illustration given to us. Uh, so that's first the bridle, second the rudder on a ship. And I put a picture up there so the children would know the rudder is that uh, small thing right at the bottom of the ship. Okay, now compared with the ship itself, the rudder is very small as compared to the ship. Very small rudder controls a large ship. Which direction you're going to go depends on the rudder. Okay, and, and that's needed. Okay, and the tongue is compared to the rudder. It's small, but it directs your life. Lip-mouthed people, it's not like very much. Some people love to have that quick response. Like you tell them, like, uh, uh, you, need to, uh, uh, you need to shut up. Shut don't go up. Yeah. Shut don't go up. When mama finished beating you, shut don't go up. Flip quick with the tongue. How many of y'all quick with it? Come on, just be honest. Some of y'all used to be quick. I done slowed down now, Pastor. Some of y'all old and quick. Just can't get it together. Or take ships as an example, verse 4 says, although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. He also compared it to fire. Some people speak dangerously. Some people dare people to kill them. People have a gun. You better use that thing. What? That's lines for the movies. Boy, you don't say that in real life. They just acted on it. That thing will kill you. Just, just let their mouth just, oh, my God. I don't know if somebody pull a gun out on me. My hand's going up and my mouth staying closed. Do I have a witness in it? Uh, do you know how dangerous fire is? A, a lighted match carelessly thrown may start a brush fire, and this brush fire may ignite a forest fire. One little match. One word you say can set the whole church on fire. One word can break your whole family up. Break your marriage up. One word. One. Word out of your mouth can destroy your life. That's how powerful the tongue is. Likewise, right in the Bible, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes what? Great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Look at verse 6. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. Sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. Watch what you say. Some of us find it more comfortable to say ugly things to people than to say nice. Some people can't say Nice thing, they just can't. They quick and ready to say ugly stuff. They'll say it all day, repeat it, say it many times, 
but it's hard for us to learn to say thanks. How many of y'all struggle with that? Be honest. Just be honest. I, I, just say I struggle with telling my children they did well. We love telling them how bad they are and what they did wrong, but we find it hard to say you did a good job. Some of us are so sassy, you're supposed to do it anyway. I don't have to say it. We, we, we go to uh, our child's room and say, you did a good job cleaning that room. No, because you did that bed. That looks nice. But we let them mess the room up. Oh, we got a whole lot to say. But we struggle saying nice things. So let's look at this. The iniquity and incorrigibility of the tongue. The iniquity and the incorrigibility of the tongue. Some of us just rather be mean and say that's just who I am. That ain't who you are. God tells you who you are. Amen. You don't know who you are. You have to go to the creator, the one who made you, and ask him, what is my purpose? How would you know as if you made yourself. God is the creator. And he tells you who you are and how you are to act. Do I have a witness in here? Yes, sir. So let's look at the iniquity and the incorrigibility of the tongue. Write this note down. Your tongue can utterly corrupt and destroy you. Now, this is right there in the Bible now. This is not Reverend Vaughn or those advice or some wisdom I, I, I discovered over of experience. No, this is directly from the Bible to all of us. Your tongue, yours, yours, the one you own. Don't worry about nobody else's tongue. Worry about yours right now. Can utterly corrupt and mess you up for life. Some people don't want to be around you because of your tongue. They just don't like the things you say. Raise your hand if you know some negative people. Come on. Y'all know some people, all they speak is negative. Oh, my God. Write this note. The tongue is the part of a man's body that he cannot tame. You ever said you weren't going to say nothing? And you end up saying it plus some more. You say, I'm not going to call them stupid. You call them stupid and whatever else, some other word. You tell them how stupid they are. Why they stupid. And how long they going to be stupid. Right? Because we can't control the tongue. You need God to help you. I hope y'all hear me. You need to pray, Father, help me with my tongue. I can't control that thing. It's right here. It's right there in the word of God. Look, all kinds of animals. Y'all been to these shows like birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. I went to SeaWorld and oh my God, Shamu is a big old baby. And they had a little bitty woman shorter than me do her hair like that and Shamu jump, way in there and twist his body and come on down. Come back by, she throw three fish in his mouth. Got Shamu at her fingertip. Whatever she say, she point, he take off again. All kinds of animals can be tamed, but no human being can tame the tongue. Now, some of you bragging about what you can do. I love when people argue against the word of God. But oh, I can control my tongue. You just messed up. You t see that sentence you said? I can control my tongue. First of all, you're lying and you're being sassy. Right there. 
You gonna tell me what I can do with my tongue? Hmm. My case is closed, Your Honor. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison that Oh, yeah, it can hurt some feelings. Raise your hand if you know you hurt some people's feelings. Come on, how many of you, how many of you planned on it? Like, I'm going over now. <laughs> you already think about what you're going to say. I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H, I, J, and K. And if they say something, elemental P, baby. Right? Right? You playing it. Oh, when I say what I got to say, oh, they're going to be hurt. They're going to hurt. Because it's a restless evil full of deadly poison. That's the tongue now. We didn't even get on the two kinds of wisdom yet, right? We're talking about the tongue, but it's, we're going to get there. Write this down. Inconsistency of the tongue. Inconsistent. How many of you ever sung Nick's song? I love you. I love you. Who sung that before? I love you, Lord, today. Raise your hand if you ever sung that. Do, do y'all realize it took the tongue to sing that, right? But the tongue can be inconsistent. The use and abuse of the tongue. You can use the tongue for good, and then the next minute, you can walk out of church still singing, I love you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Get to your car. I know nobody ain't hit my car. <laughs> who was parked next to me? Who, who was parked next to me? Sister, calm down now. Don't tell me to calm down. Because they know they hit my car and they left anyway. See, the people at this church work all my, there you go with these other words now. Just came out of church. Just sung his high praise. Lift him up. Hands in the air. Same hands that was in there ready to fight now. Got them like this now. Scratch my car. Write this in. Believers should not use their tongues to curse. Now the spouse is here. They're like, oh, no. Spouses look at each other now. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Use the tongue to curse and to praise. Now you got to choose. Which one you going to use your tongue for? You got to choose. You're going to praise or you're going to curse. I see why some of y'all quiet in church. Pastor, I was cussing all weekend. I ain't going to lie. I don't know. I done cussed out some people this weekend. <laughs> so some of them can't praise. I'll be like, I'm like, sing with me. Sing it. They just look at me like, not today, Pastor. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Try next Sunday. You can't do both, my brothers and sisters. Is your praise sincere when you use your tongue for both? Whose side are you on? Ooh. This is hard. Pastor it came out so quick. Past I burnt my grits and boom, I said the word. <laughs> came out like pastor, just burnt my grits and it came out.
You got to pray. Because the tongue is something else, isn't it? Quick, 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 quick. Ooh, it's quick. If we could run as fast as our tongue say stuff, we'd be in the Olympics. <laughs> but we could say some stuff quick. We don't even need our brain for the tongue. It speak before you think. You ever say, I said that before I thought, right? Just come on out. Here it is right here. It's in the Bible. I'm not making this up. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. So God is saying, wait, wait a minute. What, which is the real you? Are you the cursor or the praiser? Who are you? The way you spoke to my child the other day? Who are you? God is asking. Out of the same mouth come praise and what? My brothers and sisters. This should not be. Now, that's not from, I didn't add that. That's in the word of God. So if you wanted to know if it was right or wrong, there it is. It's wrong. It's wrong. And you can't be a strong witness for the Lord if you practice both. No wonder you can't win people off the job because you cussing just like them. You're cursing people out. Setting people straight. And God said, then you got the nerve to come in my church and want to raise your hands in my face as if I didn't hear you the other day. I heard what you said. A matter of fact, it's recorded. There's a commercial, Brother Paul Reginald, there's a commercial about people saying, I didn't do that. And the person said, you did do it. And they threw the flag. Y'all saw that commercial? Say, let's watch the replay. Some of y'all tell me, Pastor, oh, no, I don't do that. And Jesus said, let's throw the flag. Let's watch it. How many of y'all want God to play the replay? Anybody want the replay? Can we put y'all video up? Suppose we came here and every Sunday we showed a video of a one member. You don't know who it's going to be. <laughs> we don't know which member going to go up on tape. It comes directly from heaven. In every church, a member is shown. A clip. It starts with the preachers. Ooh. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? See, listen, this is not for play. Are you a follower of Christ or are you pretending? Because God is calling you to the carpet now. He's saying, hey, you with me or you're not? You can't be on both sides. And so he asks you a question here. Can fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives? That don't make sense, does it? Or a grapevine bear figs? So what is he saying to us? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So God said, wait a minute, now who you fooling here? Who you, who you think you're fooling? You go over to the church and pretend you're all holy and all of that, and during the week you're a totally different person. This striving, this, this, this praying and asking God for help, is a 24-hour thing. 
How many of you even wake up in the middle of the night and say, Father, help me? Help me, Lord, right? Uh, uh, at all times, because we can be some sometimey people. Anybody in here admit that you're sometimey? Sometimes you don't want to be bothered. And you can act ugly. Some people, when they get sleepy, oh, they different from when they're awake. Ooh, oh, Lord, when, when Britt got hungry, oh, Lord, she didn't want to talk. She didn't want to talk. Act like she was crazy. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And eat one spoon of food to my dad. Hit the spot. Girl, all that you was carrying on? I'm full now. Full? That's a commercial, but the Snicker commercial, right? Yeah, you, you act like a totally different person. When they give you the snicker, you turn back to yourself. God is asking you, are you with me or are you pretending? So you got to work on yourself. You can't go around talking about this is just who I am. Unacceptable to the Lord. God said, I know. That's why I'm here to change you. That's why I'm here. That's why you need me and you need my word. Because I don't like the way you're behaving. You're embarrassing me. Saying you're my child and behaving the way you behave. The things you say. Your attitude embarrasses me. You're ugly in your way. You're mean. And that needs to change. Tell your neighbor you got to change. Come on now, y'all scared to even say that. Come on, tell them you got to change. Write this down. Now here we go. Let's see now. All of that to get to the subject. Two kinds of wisdom. So we got some instructions. This is what we need. Instructions in wisdom for the tongue. Now, wisdom, there's true wisdom. And that's false wisdom. Now, they got some wisdom out there. People tell you some things. Like you and your husband may have an a, a, a argument or confrontation. And you go to, the, to some people and they say, girl, if I was you, I'd leave. Girl, look, wising up. You ain't got to put up with that. See, you need some wisdom. What you say he said? Oh, girl, you crazy. And you tell me she is my best friend. She'll never steer me wrong. Want to bet? Anybody who tell you to go a different direction than what the word of God says is a liar. No matter how long you know, girl, we went to kindergarten together. We've been friends for life. That's why you have grade. You got the wrong friend. And you had that lying tongue with you all those years. So there's two kinds of wisdom. Now the Bible's direct. I'm glad it is. Makes my job easier, Sister Graves. All I got to do is say, see? Let's look at it. The question is, who is wise in understanding among you? That's the question of the Bible. Who is wise and have some understanding? Everybody you talk to don't have understanding. Listen. Just because a person sounds confident in what they're saying, going to make it right. We believe in confidence. We buy into confidence. They said it so strongly. Any good liar lies strongly. He wouldn't be a good liar if he lied weakly. If you could just tell he's lying, he ain't a good liar. Come on now. A liar is good at lying. Anybody know some good liars? See, some of you Christians try to lie and get busted every time. Like, oh, stop lying. 
People tell you right quick, stop lying. But a good liar, ooh, confidently speaking. But the Bible asks, who is wise? And understanding. Write this down. Believers should never allow their tongues to be influenced by Satan. So who's giving you advice? Who's telling you what you should say? Who are you obeying? Believers in Christ should never, not at any time, influence you to speak. Y'all with me? All right, let's look at demonic wisdom first. There's some wisdom that may sound good. Girl, you ought to leave your church. Don't listen to people who tell you stuff like that. All they want over there is your money. They don't care nothing about you. When you got sick and didn't tell nobody, they didn't even come and see you. Remember that? Remember you was in the hospital for two weeks and you tell the pastor? He sure didn't come see you, did he? <laughs> if I was you, I'd see. Now y'all y'all think that sounds silly. But remember, I'm a pastor's son too. I've seen this. I've seen this literally happen. And my father said, but you didn't tell me. You should have knew I was missing but you miss all the time. <laughs> you only come two Sundays out the month. <laughs> you only care about certain people. And Sister Lucius told me I should leave. Sister Lucius, our Sunday school teacher? Here it is, right out the Bible. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven. Now, notice the Bible says wisdom. It's a wisdom to somebody. They think it's wise. But such wisdom, that kind of wisdom, does not come down from heaven, but it's what? Earthly It's three things. What else? Unspiritual and what else? So, if the pastor say, that's of the devil, don't get mad. It's right here. He can say this, that's of the devil. And then he can go on and say, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. You should have just read the scripture. I said the same thing. For where you have envy, worrying about what somebody else got. That happens right here in the church. Worrying about what somebody else got. Raise your hand if God been good to you. Come on, to you, personally, you. Why are you worrying about somebody else then? From where you have envy and selfish ambition, you want something to bring recognition to your name. Selfish ambition. You don't want it for the good cause of goodness. You don't want to be the boss at the job so that the company can do better. You just want to be recognized by your peers. Selfish ambition. You want to be the accountant of the company and you don't know algebra. But you want to be the accountant so people can say, he's an accountant. That's all you want it for. You want to be the president of the choir and you don't even like the choir members. 
The director said, did you call the members? Oh, I don't do that, Pastor. I don't call people. Did you communicate with them about the rehearsal schedule? Oh, they know. They ought to know. Why are you president? Why do you even want to be president? What is your purpose besides selfish ambition? There you find what? Disorder and every evil practice. That happens in church, Britain. That happens in church. All pastors get together. We have to get together and we find that, hey, man, that's happening in my church too. I don't care how small or how large. You have people in there running their mouths, saying stuff about people who are doing the best they can at the work while they do nothing. Wanting somebody else's position just to get recognition for themselves. Not interested in the work. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody want to be a musician right now. Just to be seen so people can say, ooh, ooh she can play, can't she? She tearing that thing up. She make that thing talk. Ooh. Then when they say that, here you come back next week with a long ponytail, <laughs> glitter on, gold shoes. The lost your mind. They're like, here come the musician. You a star now. Don't let nobody compliment you when you sing a solo. Ooh, girl, you can sing. You sing like Yolanda Adams. Boom, head blown. Pastor, I have singing engagements. I, you know, I'll make it to church when I can, but you know, I have a schedule. I have a schedule. I'm busy. I'm all over the city singing. Big head. Help us in the choir. Pastor, I don't sing parts no more. I'm a leader. I used to sing alto when I was a child, Pastor, but I'm, I'm a star now. I'm known. I'm recognized. How many of y'all got the big head? It even happens on the workplace, don't you? You was a good co-worker when you was working beside everybody. They made you supervisor? Oh, Lord. You make two dollars more than everybody else. <laughs> they know that. Listen, I worked out there. They'll give you a business card, and you just, that's all you need. 25 cent more than everybody else in a business card, and you, they got you. You the man. Nobody to give the card to. You work in a warehouse, and they give you a box of cards. Warehouse manager. Oh, Lord. Here you come to church giving your cards out. I don't need no warehouse manager, bro. <laughs> Pastor, here's my card. Warehouse manager? At a and <laughs> Y'all got some free food? Y'all gonna get one? Y'all got some nacho cheese or something? <laughs> I can use at the church. <laughs> Don't take much. Demonic wisdom. Write this in. In order to control the tongue, believers should always allow God's wisdom to influence their speech. Who should influence your speech? Not every kind of wisdom you hear out there. Stop listening to other people. Listen to the word of God. Here it is right here. Here it is again. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their what? Good life, Good life by what? That comes from wisdom. I'll read 17 and 18 and we're going to close. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all what? Come on. Don't stop reading. Is what? Then what? Peace-loving, considerate, 
submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Now, you go on and deal with God with that. That's between you and God now. How are you going to handle it? What are you going to do with the word you just learned? Are you going to continue accepting demonic wisdom? Or will you accept God's wisdom? The Lord died many years ago that you might have heaven as your home when, you, when, it, when it's your time. But also, he wants you to live a Christian life while you're here. So these words are giving to us that we may live a righteous life before God. It's right here in the word of God. It's not a mystery. It's not a secret. It's all about learning and obeying. Learn and obey and trust the word of God. Doing what it says, not being a hearer only. But control your tongue with the help of the Holy Spirit and the word of God. That's God's wisdom. God's wisdom is what we need, not demonic wisdom or worldly wisdom. Don't listen to everybody online and all their advice. Listen to the word of God. Clap your hands for the word of God on today. Amen. Let us pray. Bow your heads. Bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we've heard your word. Now, dear Lord, we need to apply what we have heard to our lives. We've got to do it, Lord. But we can't do it without your help. Your Holy Spirit in which you have given unto us. Oh, Father, strengthen us. Oh, Father, through the hearing of your word. And, Father, the submissiveness of our heart. Strengthen us that we can do these things that you require of us as your children. Father, that we bring glory to your name and not shame. Bless each and every one of us as an individual. And bless us as a church that we may be known as a church that does what you require. Bless even the children here that as they go off to church, they remember that everything said is not good. But Father, that they should obey you and trust you. Sometimes it's best just to be quiet. Bless us in your daughter and son Jesus' name. Let us pray. Amen. All right. Somebody may want to come and accept the Lord. Let us stand. accept those words from the Lord. If you need prayer, don't be ashamed to come and receive prayer. God can strengthen you right now. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Make up your mind. He But you got to come. Come to, come to Jesus. Jesus while you have time. While you have. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We didn't take up the offering on today. We want to take a minute to do that. Those of you who did not give when you came in the door, uh, we want you to do so right now. For those of you who give online, please do so at this time. Those of you who want to give a gift to your pastor, make it out to Pleasant Valley Baptist Church. Give it to the church. Amen. Give your gift to the church. And uh, the brothers will look at it and see what's appropriate for me but don't worry about me right now give to the church remember our Christmas box our Christmas box 
Uh, a couple Sundays from now, we want everyone prepared to give. Now, this is what I'm going to do. We didn't have our state rally this year. We didn't have the birthday rally. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give for all three of them because this is something I would have done anyway this year. So for those of you who can join me in that, let's do that. Uh, we're, we're trying to catch up to where we need to be financially. So if you can help, help. Amen. So I'm going to do that in a couple of weeks. I'm not only going to give for Christmas, but I'm going to give for the birthday rally too and for the state rally because I did it last year. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it this year. Amen. So those of you can do that. But right now it's offering time. Uh, so uh, let's do that. We can bring it to the table if you don't mind, Brother Powell. You can just bring it up so they can quickly get it in the back. All right, those of you who want to give, let's do that right now. Come on, praise team, sing that. What the mighty God we serve. What the mighty God we serve. Angel. The end of glory for you. Heaven and earth of glory. What the mighty God we serve. Come on. What the mighty God we serve. Anybody else want to come? You can come right now. for your contribution and your gift unto the Lord. May the Lord bless you for giving according to the word of God. He'll open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Amen. Let us stand. Shake your neighbor's hand. We didn't get to do that earlier. Let them know that you love them. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Have a seat. I forgot the program is still going on. Hold on. I'm sorry. Earlier this week when I spoke with my brother-in-law, uh, and he was telling me that we have to say something, you know, past as a husband. I said, I already did that already. I was like, you got to say something again? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, that's the tradition of the church. I was like, okay. So um, as my husband and I were talking earlier this week, and we were talking about how long he had been serving, and... Um, he was counting the years, and I was like, wait, I was like, I don't, from the story I know of, it's longer than that. So come to find out, it's been 45 years um, that he has been actively serving in the church in various roles. So um, a lot of what has been said already from the children, the grandchildren, um, the members, Sister Jones, Sister Grays, um, is pretty much what I'm going to say again. Um, and the life that pastor lives, it is the same every day. What you see here is the same thing at home. What you heard everybody else say has been the same throughout the years. So it's not um, something that we just do for a front or act or anything like that. It's genuine. 
from the time he gets up to the time he goes to bed in the middle of the night is the church and the members um, outside of family. So with that being said, um, I just have a few things that I want to say um, about my husband, who is also my pastor and also my teacher. <laughs> um, all, of, all of those things combined, so with so many different roles that he plays in my life. Um, first, I want to say that he is a faithful man of God. Um, he's faithful to me, faithful to our family, and faithful to the body of Christ. Um, he is bold for God, and he is always telling others, you know, about the righteousness of God and why it's so important about why your relationship with the Lord is so important. He is loving. He is a big baby. <laughs> uh, when, <laughs> when Pastor and I first met, um, and I used to drive to work talking to the Lord and praying and things like that, and we were talking and things like that, and getting to know one another, and I said, uh, I said, God, I said, he's very emotional. <laughs> and I said, you think you could kind of move that on out the way? And the Lord was like, no, uh, strictly no. And I didn't understand that when we first met, and I didn't understand the task behind the role. Um, and as in the short time, I quickly understood um, by talking to the members, by getting to know other people, and just by observing him. Um, he is one who fervently prays all throughout the day. Um, he's a servant leader. He's a visionary, as you guys heard. He's an administrator. He likes things to be done right. Um, he is a hugger. He is tidy. He likes things a certain way, so he's around the house cleaning, doing things when I'm not able to do it. Um, he's a listener. He's quick to forgive. He likes to tell stories. He's honest. He's dependable. He's dedicated. He's sympathetic. And he executes. If he has a thought in his mind, a vision that God gives him, it's, it's right then and there. Like, we're going to do it. He's trying to paint the picture. And I'm like, I ain't seeing nothing you're saying right now. But the things and the tasks that God gives him and to see it come to pass is just, sometimes it's, I, I'm just in awe. The things that God does in his life, the little bitty things that, you know, that he has faith about. Um, and I'm just like, you know, okay, all right. Some things, sometimes he worries a lot and I'm like, okay, trust God. So we bounce off of each other sometimes. Some things that he needs strength, some areas where he needs strength in, you know, I kind of try to help him along the way. And sometimes I'm just quiet when he's listening. When he's talking, I'm listening. And he's like, you ain't saying nothing. This is a conversation. Go back and forth. And I'm like, I, I'm trying to soak it all in at times. So he um, is a man without excuses, as you heard Nicole say, you know, there is there's no reason that you should not be doing anything, especially when it comes down to the Lord. There's no excuse. He's not afraid of making mistakes. He's funny, as you guys can see. Um, he's wise. And he is zealous for the word of God. He's always studying and always trying to see how he can present the information to you all in an effective way. Um, and a lot of times I kind of get out the way and I'm like, you know, he's talking to me. I was like, I don't want to know. I won't find out Sunday, you know, like everybody else. And he's sharing things with me as he's learning and growing. Um, and he humbles himself under God. Whatever the Lord instructs him to do, he does it. Um, and sometimes it can be challenging. Uh, what a lot of things that some of the members may or may not understand. So with that being said, I just want to say, I thank God for my husband. I thank God for putting him in my life. Um, the way that it happened, how it happened, we sometimes joke about it and like, you know, like, okay, like God, we would have never thought. Um, 
but I thank God for you. Um, I'm always praying for you, and I'm asking the church to do the same, to pray for him and pray specifically for the things that, uh, the challenges that he may go through, the concern that he has for you all that many of you may not even know about. Um, so your prayers are very important. It's not about money. It's not about anything like that. Your prayers, doing what the Bible says, and serving at the church, that is kind of like the top things that I believe that a pastor wants from the members and what God wants. Because how can we dis demonstrate God if we don't start right here at home? We can't go out into the world and share anything if we don't have that knowledge and God helps him with that knowledge and the Holy Spirit opens up his mind to understand what is written in the Bible to share with us. So I'm asking you to continue to pray for him. Um, I love you and I respect you. Um, I love our date nights, yes. And our little excursions get away. Yes, we get away sometimes. <laughs> um, but I thank you for continuing to teach and teaching boldly the unadulterated word of God, even when it cuts, um, when it hurts others, and when it hurts us, we'll say it like that. We think that it hurts us, but it's helping us. Um, and I thank you for persevering and remaining faithful in all that you do in the work within the church. And even though I may not have been here to see it all throughout the years, but just to see it now, um, it's truly a blessing. Um, even with all of the challenges, the offenses that many pastors face, people leaving the church, things that happen within the church, again, that some members may not never know about. The pastor has to deal with it. I would tease him all the time, and I was like, nobody knows the troubles the pastor sees. <laughs> so I tell him that all the time. It's like, it's, it's a challenge sometimes. And he saying dealing with the babies, you know, it's sometimes we act like babies. And the pastor has to deal with it. And sometimes how he handles situations is I'm like, I would have never said that. <laughs> I would have never done that. But he's careful about how he handles situations and how he talks and the love that he shows to every individual. Um, so I thank you for demonstrating the true Christian life. Um, you not only talk the talk, but you walk the walk. And um, I thank you for never compromising when it comes down to God's word. So I thank you, I appreciate you, and I love you, and keep striving in God. Wow, this has been a wonderful day. We've been blessed, first of all, by the word of God. Did not pass the move on us today Amen. with God's word, and we really do appreciate it. And 12 years, he's able. He, God is able to do any and everything but fail. We appreciate our pastor, and we appreciate our first lady, April. Wonderful day. And uh, should I, I'm going to do you first, okay? Because you're a wonderful first lady. <laughs> to Sister April, first lady, we love you and we appreciate you and all that you do um, in the church and on the outside of the church and keeping our past in check. Uh, we appreciate that. And from the women of this valley, we love you. <laughs> to our pastor of the hour, really appreciate your pastor. I mean, we come and go with you, but we really appreciate you. Amen. Yeah, uh, a teacher a teacher who knows his word, and every Sunday when you preach, it just illuminates within all of us all that you have taught us over the years. 
12 years, it seemed like, it doesn't seem like 12 to y'all. To y'all, doesn't seem like 12 years, huh? But it's been 12 years, and we have truly all grown to love you more and more every Sunday and every year. And this is a certificate of appreciation. It's awarded hereby presented to Reverend Dr. Reginald Vonado Sr. in celebration of your service as senior pastor for 12 years at the Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church, awarded on this 10th day of December, 2023, presented by the officers and members of the Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church. Hang this on the wall, Pastor. And a little token of our appreciation is coming from the Deaconess Board because you have really strengthened your Deaconess Board and the women of this church. Thank you. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. And because of our church situation, Deaconess, I hope y'all don't mind. I'm going to turn this over to the church. Amen. Amen. Because we have to look out for the church first. Thank y'all so much and uh, for your gift. And we're going to turn it over, Brother Horn. If you, or Belinda, if you. All right. Thank y'all so much. And um, um, I want y'all to pray also for my wife because um, life is like a soap opera sometimes. And uh, it is. Y'all know I don't tell no lies. I talked to Sister McDonald yesterday and she was in tears. And Sister McDonald said, people still say ugly things about me, Pastor, since I married Mac. So uh, my wife heard her when she said that. And I said, see? I said, if they still doing it to Sister Mac after they've been married all them years, what you think they gonna do you? And we could feel it. We could feel it. We could feel it. But you know, you got to answer to God because God told me what to do. And then I went to my mama. And my mama said, I like her. So for the rest of you who live in this soap opera world, you're by yourself because I'm going to obey God and mama. Amen. Say amen anyway. Amen. amen. And for those of you who are messing with Sister McDonald, you're messing with me. <laughs> because that lady is a strong woman of the Lord. And you don't know anything about a spouse when they die. You don't know nothing about that. Sister Jones knows what I'm talking about. But you don't know. Sister Bates knows what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't know what you thought. Sister uh, McGill knows what I'm talking about. And uh, I brought April by Sister McGill house. And Sister McGill was so happy, she said, and she pretty too, Pastor. But see, for the rest of you who got your little soap opera mind, you go ahead with it. Because the Bible says, unto death do you part. And the Lord told me himself when I prayed. He said, Tammy is not your wife no more, and neither will she ever be because marriage is for earth. So he told me, move on. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to go out there and find no woman. I don't know nothing about I'm not a rap, Tasha. I don't know what to say. And the Lord told me, call April. And that's all he said. And we've been married for four years now. So if you don't like it still after four years, that's on you. That's on you. And you have to answer to God. But she's a good wife, and she loves this church, and she works just as hard as I do for the church. So we're going to keep working. We're going to keep doing what God tells us to do. And soap operas, y'all go on. One day you'll turn the channel. God bless you. Say amen anyway. Amen. Somebody say, he, he just so, he just don't know how to say things politically correct. You don't have no sense. But I know, I know what you're doing. And God knows too. Before we leave today, I had a dream the other day and I woke up and told her. I said, 
you and I were sitting in this arena. I said, it was a big old arena, and we were sitting like midway together. And I said, my daddy was on the stage in a suit. He was looking so nice. Jump. And he got on stage, and he said, uh, I want to uh, say this. He said, Reginald Varnado out there. He said, that's my son. And he said, he's doing a fantastic job. And he said, he's worrying about getting old. And I want him to know that a man's life is far greater than his age. And I woke up and told him. So if God is happy, my mama happy. My daddy happy. You're in that by yourself. Amen. Amen. Do what you want to do. But God's church will never fail. When my father became pastor, a lot of the elder people packed their bags and said, we out of here. And God filled the church with children. Children. Filled it with children. Children from everywhere. And the children paid more money than the adults did when they were there. You can't stop God with your attitude. Get over it. Move on. Let's do church. God bless you. Stand up and tell your neighbor I love you. Come on, use your tongue for good. Tell him I love you. Let the church. Let the church. Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church would like to thank all of our online viewers for worshiping with us. We hope that you enjoy our online worship experience. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share to help spread the word of God and receive notifications of future online experiences.